Hey, how's it going, YouTube? Um, this is gonna be kind of a, a three-part video. Uh, I'm having some issues uh, filling up my gas tank. Every time I try to fill up, it acts like the gas tank is full, even though it's empty. Uh, so it just keeps clicking on and off, and it's kind of random. Uh, it'll do it sometimes, and then sometimes it won't. Uh, I've been looking on YouTube and checking the forums, and they're telling me that uh, supposedly w there's three things that you need to check if you're having this issue. Um, and it's all with your EVAP system or your emissions control system. Um, you're going to want to check your, uh, uh, first off, you're going to want to check your, your uh, EVAP canister solenoid. Um, and there's a hose that goes from that to the tank. Um, that allows the vapors to escape when you're filling up the tank um, and that can sometimes get clogged with uh, I think uh, carbon deposits uh, from the canister uh, so if there are there's a buildup of, of carbon deposits in that hose um, then the canister needs to get replaced um, I already bought the um, evap solenoid because I think that it's the solenoid that's causing the issue um, this way, if it is a solenoid, I can just go ahead and install the new solenoid um, and just keep moving because I'm gonna. This is my daily driver, so if it's not the solenoid, I have to put everything back together so that I can get out there. Also, little tip for you guys that if you're trying to do this, um, the manual, if you have the manual, tells you that you're gonna want to um, drop the gas tank and yes that's true but also just to make it a little easier for you um, if you remove the trunk liner from the trunk there's a little door um, that you can or like a trap door that you can remove uh, that will give you access to um, the tank uh, where you pull out the the fuel pump um, and then to the left of that more towards the passenger side um, is going to be your your solenoid and your canister uh, so unfortunately you can't pull it out through there um, you still need to drop the gas tank in order to get it out um, but you can disconnect the lines and everything that you need um, supposedly I'm told from up there so I'm gonna try to at least do that and do a video on that um, then also I'm having issues with uh, on the passenger side when I try to open the trunk um, the wing doesn't um, release from from the butt rest and I've had this issue twice already so I already know what the issue is um, I'm missing a bushing over there on the cable uh, that pulls the latch for the butt rest um, I've installed a fishing weight on there twice already and it keeps popping off so it's really frustrating but I got a pack of those little fishing weights for like less than a buck uh, so right now I'm just going to install a new weight um, and do another video on that um, because I don't think I posted the videos I did previously and I think I deleted them so um, there's that as well that we're going to do um, and what else that I wanted to address in this video I was going to do three things well anyway um, the bushing I already went to like discount auto parts and AutoZone and all these other places to see if I could get the bushing that I need. Unfortunately, they don't have the ones uh, that I need for the Solstice. Um, I am going to maybe try to see if I can go to the dealer and maybe get it from the dealer. I don't know if they still have it available. A lot of stuff has been discontinued. Um, oh, also, if you feel so inclined and you're having the issue with the uh, gas tank not filling up, one of the things that you can do, I've seen it on the forums, they've posted pictures, um, that hump in your trunk is where the uh, tank is at and, and the canister and all that stuff that you need to get to. Unfortunately, like I said, you can't pull it out through the door there because it's to the left of that door. You can do a mod and cut the top off and this way you can access the canister and the solenoid and all that stuff on the left side of the door um, some people are completely cutting the hump off and uh, 
you know, fashioning their own uh, kind of hump over that to protect it. Um, I think there, there's some people that have like 3D printers and stuff like that, so they're just able to reprint it. And I don't know how they're reattaching it, but they found some way to do it. Um, you could do that. Uh, I recommend just cutting a hole in the top so that you can kind of like pull the canister and stuff out. Maybe finding uh, another piece of fiberglass and resin to to be able to cover up the hole after you've cut off the top. And um, so there's there's that. You can look at the forums to see um, if you get a better idea on how to do it and how to address it. I don't have a Dremel tool or anything like that to cut the top off, and I don't have anything to uh, put back on there once I cut the top off. So I kind of don't want to do that. So I'm going to take the long road uh, and just drop the tank. I'm hoping that I won't have to drop the tank as much. They're saying that you can, if you drop the suspension just a little bit and the tank, you can pull it out. Um, but the uh, manual says that it takes about eight and a half hours to do that. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe if I drop the tank low enough, I can slide the canister over. Um, I don't know, some of you that have already faced this might know that that might not be possible, but that's kind of what I want to see. Uh, if I can't do it that way, then yeah, I'm gonna have to put in the time and uh, just do it the standard way, uh, hopefully. Uh, that won't be the case, but I have a strong feeling that it will because as you guys know With this car Nothing's ever really that simple so uh, Hopefully this helped um, Those of you that are having this issue get a better idea of what you need to do to address them um, I know there's a third thing that I wanted to tackle Don't remember what it is but I'll probably remember as I'm fixing other stuff. So I will post another video in addition to all the other ones that I'm doing. All right, I'm out here working on the 2008 Solstice. Um, so the first thing you need to do when, if you're going to do any kind of work on your EVAP system, uh, like the charcoal canister solenoid or the canister itself, um, first thing you need to do is disconnect um, the battery for those of you that haven't done it I'm not gonna touch right now because I just turned the car off so it's gonna be really hot um, pop those two tabs and then lift and you'll be able to get to the nut to undo uh, the battery and then uh, what you need to do afterward um, so in the manual it says yeah remove dis disconnect the battery power then disconnect the hoses, such as uh, the, the power uh, line, and then there's another hose that you disengage from the solenoids and stuff like that. And then uh, you need to remove the gas and then drop the tank. Uh, that's a crude shortcut of basically the steps that you're gonna need to take. Uh, so at this point, I'm gonna remove the trunk liner. Um, it's very easy to do. There's a little kind of like rubber casing or nipple or whatever you want to call it on these nuts for this uh, latch for the convertible top. All you got to do is undo those that nut there and another one on the other side. And this trunk line is really easy. You just kind of like just pull and it pops off. It's not like glued in or anything like that, which is a good thing. Um, also, uh, you want to dis disengage the power first so that you can disconnect that light and remove um, the uh, trunk liner. I've already kind of started to work uh, the minor work, like just popping it off little by little. I removed that whole... Uh, what is it? The tire inflator machine thing. See, it just kind of pops off. It's not hard. 
I just want to be careful, be delicate with it. And this is the only thing I'm concerned with, uh, which is why I'm doing this video, is because uh, it's kind of in there. But everyone's telling me I'm hearing that it just pops off. So you just, I'm going to try to do that gently without breaking anything. And then I can remove this liner. And then right here, there's a couple screws that you need to remove. And then you can take the cover off. I mean, you should be able to see the pump um, and all that other stuff. The canister and the solenoid is all the way on that other side. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, I'm going to pause right. here. As you can see, I've already removed that little nut. It's 10 millimeter. You do the same thing on the other side. And then for that little light, the... Um, there are these two clips right here. I just popped the two clips open. The light then came forward. Came forward like that and I twisted it sideways and then just slid it right through the, this little hole here. Um, you don't need to disconnect the bulb um, if you don't want to. Uh, you really don't need to. But if you feel so inclined, this would be a good time to go ahead and replace that bulb uh, with LEDs because there's not a lot of light from that bulb and LEDs could give you a wider spread uh, and brighter light. So, you, you know, just some fruit for thought. And then, just so you guys can see, I just have to be careful. There's a, you know, the people there. It's a little stiff. But, yeah, looks like I was hoping I could just fold this over and then work, but apparently I can't. I'm gonna have to go ahead and remove um, that part of the trunk or the convertible top. I need both hands to be able to pop that free uh, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, tis true, tis true, can be pulled out. Uh, <coughs> it's just held in right in there. Uh, just give it a good tug and it'll come loose. And then this is what it looks like underneath the trunk liner. This little insulation bit is kind of got some probably glue or caulking on it but you can actually kind of see the outline of the little door that I was talking about and it's got some screws that hold it in place uh, so I kind of just realized that I did not get and I don't have any other caulking to put this back on once I'm done work, <coughs> excuse me. Once I'm done working, uh, <coughs> I'm gonna keep moving forward just to show you guys, and then I'll just worry about getting the caulking and all that stuff after. So good news is um, I don't need caulking or glue. Um, this door is pretty much free. It's not glued down. You just flip it over, and then you're good to go. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pop this open. And I thought I would need a screwdriver. Apparently I need some sockets. Uh, so I gotta go get those now. Okay, so in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna be all up in my trunk space. Um, just so that I can be right over it when I'm working. And this is a seven millimeter socket. And I kind of want to use both hands. Well, I don't really need to, but you don't really need to see me undoing some bolts. You get the idea. Seven millimeter, go all the way around, pop them off. Okay, this is just so that you can see what's inside. Once you remove the cover, it's this sort of like aluminum cover. It has like an adhesive back to it, so it sticks. And then the uh, bolts on there just for good measure for when that adhesive wears off. Um, there are two lines connected to the canister. Um, you see that nipple right there? That's where I pulled this one out of. Um, it's a push. You just need to squeeze on this yellow tab and then it slides off. And the same thing for that white one. 
um, you might have to wiggle it just a little bit, but it'll come out. Uh, I'm, I kind of need both hands for that, but yeah, um, it's I'm in like a weird angle. I'm sitting inside my trunk just so I could do this, um, and then just so you guys can get an angle. That round thing with that spout, that's the canister solenoid, I believe. Um, and I think that's what's going wrong with my car. So I'm going to try to see if I can slide the whole thing out this way. There are all these um, connections and stuff in the way that you don't want to damage. So it might not be possible to slide it out because it's so tight um, under there that I, I probably won't have any room. Um, it is also a pretty big canister, so even if I am able to slide it, I won't. I probably won't have any wiggle room to like turn it and and pull it out. Um, but I'm gonna give it a shot, see if I can. If I can't, then I'm gonna drop the tank. Um, yeah, it's really honestly, I, I think that's the only way to do this. So I'm looking out there, and there's like there's no way. Um, but I'm still gonna try. Um, but for those of you that are having this issue. Um, now you know. Okay, so when I took off this hose, you can actually kind of hear them rattling, and you can see these little black pellets right here. This is the carbon buildup from the canister. Um, so this means crap. I have to un I have to completely replace the canister. The canister's bad. Damn. Canisters about like 150 AutoZone um, maybe I can find it cheaper uh, somewhere else but the solenoid is only like 36 bucks so I was really hoping that, that would be the issue but yeah um, so yeah that's that's a good way to find out what the issue is for you guys just pop these hoses out if you're getting those black pellets you need to replace your canister because that is what's clogging up the line. This line right here is clogged with all of these little black pellets and, and even just tapping it you see like little pellets come out. So there's the vapor um, that escapes the gas tank and goes into the canister um, and then has uh, some of that vapor, I don't know the science behind it, but some of the vapor can, uh, attaches to the charcoal and then uh, it releases CO2 and a bunch of other gases instead of um, all those harmful pollutants. Also, um, if you're having this issue, your car will not pass inspection because it is releasing um, pollutants into the air probably because the, the charcoal is not doing its job right. It's just getting released into the solenoid and I might because it's clogged, I might have to just replace both parts. I don't know, I'm gonna test them, see if the solenoid is bad, but I think it's just the canister that's, that's damaged, because as you can see, the charcoal's coming out of the canister into this, this line. So. Okay, so a little tip for getting the trunk liner back in. Um, this little thing that goes into that hole that we popped out, I'm just using the spring in the wing to hold it up on both sides um, because it's just me. Uh, this will make it easier for me to put everything back in. Um, Alright, so a little tip for getting the trunk liner back into place. You want to put it back in with the back end, the back end in first. So it kind of comes in and then drops like that. Um, you know, you might have to fold it up a bit and then roll it back in but everything just pops right right back into place it, it, it literally isn't bolted or glued or anything it just kind of sits there um, the only things that you want to be a little careful when doing the trunk release cable uh, there's a, a, a cut in the fabric that will allow you to pop it back in and also slide it out. Um, just be careful when you're doing it. Don't 
tug on it or anything like that too hard. Um, it just requires a little bit of finesse, otherwise you might rip it. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's not hard. It, it took me all about like a minute and a half to put back in. And then, once you're done doing that, obviously you want to put the nuts back on here and there, 10 millimeter again, and then drop these back into that hole, just push them back in, and they should hold back into place. All right, and that's that for as far as removing the trunk liner um, and getting a look at what you got to work with on the inside. So hopefully this helped you guys out. Okay, I'm making this video for the 2008 Pontiac Solstice. For those of you that are having trouble with the wing getting stuck in the buttress or buttress, whatever you call it, um, this is all you need to fix it. You're going to start with this hook from a pick and hook set that you can get from your local Harbor Freight. It's like two bucks. Um, 20% off coupon. If it's always circulating, if you got one, you know, it'll be even cheaper. Um, this pack of uh, fishing weights was like 94 cents, so like a dollar and some change with tax. And then a um, set of these type of pliers or just any regular type of needle nose pliers um, will do the job. So I've already got part of it done because I was already working inside the trunk. I had to get it open and I already skipped this part. So I'm just gonna show you real quick what you need to do with the pick and hook set. If you got the one from Harbor Freight, this one's a really good one to use because it's long enough to be able to do what you need it to do. So just to show you what you're gonna do um, with this pick and hook set. And the reason why you wanna use this one is because it's kind of bent in a couple different ways. Um, it allows you to come over here, slide right up underneath the rubber grommet, and then twist so that it is now facing that way. And you will use it to press up against that little latch that's locking the wing, like that, and then it'll quickly release. And then you should be able to unlock the trunk with your key fob or the button in the glove box. Like so. Wrong button. Yes. See? Once the wing pops out, you can open up the trunk with the button in the glove box or your key fob. And then what you're going to want to do is with those pliers. Um, go ahead and remove this retainer and then the second one down here so you can peel this carpeting or line your back and then I will show you what we're going to do from there. I need both hands for this so I'm just going to pause the video real quick and then show you okay. once so, we get there. I've got the retainer clips removed then you can peel it back and this is what your problem is. Um, actually, wow, I actually don't need another fishing weight. So here's what the problem is this it doesn't come with this ball I install that that's the fishing weight um, and this ball here is too skinny for this loop here uh, when you click the button to unlock the trunk it slips through that loop instead of pulling um, like it's supposed to there's supposed to be a little bushing here um, that stops the ball from slipping through that bushing broke so I did this fishing weight thing and unfortunately that fishing weight is now too small in diameter as well and it's popping through the loop as well um, the good news is the fishing ball is or the fishing weights already on there so I just have to pop this um, out of its spot it just snaps in there and you can just pop it off and then um, push it right back in place which is what I'm going to do right now. I need both hands, so. Okay, cool. So, that's what it looks like when you're done. Now, I was actually lucky 
I uh, decided not to pop it out of place, save myself that extra step. I just pulled this back and then um, put the cable back in place. And hopefully I won't continue to have this problem, but it keeps popping out of place. Either the fishing weight falls off or it pops through that loop there. Uh, so hopefully you guys have better luck than I do. Maybe I'm using the wrong size. I don't know. Um, I saw the instructions on how to do this on YouTube. Um, gentleman, uh, I think his channel is called Because Daddy. Um, he had a Pontiac Solstice and had this issue and ran through it real quick on how to fix it. Um, didn't actually do a demo video just because he didn't have the time, but he gave me the idea of what I needed to do to get it fixed. So uh, all credit goes to him. Super grateful. Um, you guys can probably watch that video to get um, an idea of what I'm talking about. If this, if you want some more info from this, you know, from his video, you can do that. Um, this is just a demo video because he wasn't able to actually demo it. Um, but yeah, that's essentially all you need to do is just put that fishing weight right up against that little uh, ball there, and you're good to go. So I'm going to test it now before I put everything back into place. Uh, and make sure that it doesn't keep popping through that loop. If it does, I'm just going to replace the fishing weight with a new fishing weight. So, here we go with test number one. Well, the problem is not the trunk, it's this. Okay. Try not to slam it as, as hard as I did because that might cause it to, uh, the fishing weight to fall out of place. So, we'll try it. Good, that was one attempt. Make sure. Yep, it popped right through again. So, that fishing weight is no good. So, I'm gonna remove it. Okay, and so I tested one. it three times already, and it seems to be holding. So, I'm gonna test it one more time so you guys can see. Okay, open. Make sure the fishing weight is still in place. Still good. Okay. Uh, it looks like it's not gonna hold for long. Uh, so hopefully, um, I won't have to do this again. But for those of you that are struggling with this issue, sorry, my finger's in the way. That's how you fix it. Um, it should only take you about like 20 minutes worth of work, and that's being generous. Uh, I just did this whole thing in like about two, three minutes. So, um, you know, I think the hardest thing that you guys might struggle with is getting the fishing weight onto the cable. It took me a little bit to figure it out, but then again, I don't go fishing, so I had no idea what to do. But hopefully, this helps you. And I think I left the pliers in the trunk, so. Boom. Still working. And I forgot to put the retainer clips back in. But yeah.